Hey, Mark Spec the Comics, and I'm back. This time, I got my much anticipated CGC Golden Age, Silver Age unboxing. If you're interested in seeing what books came in the mail, what grades I got, stay tuned for that intro. Hey, so welcome back. If you haven't already, please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Hit that bell notification so that when I do put out some content, you'll get in a timely fashion. Like I said, ended up getting, this is my first package of the uh, CGC unboxing. This was the Golden Age and one Silver Age book. There's nine books total. And um, I submitted these, I want to say back in late April, right before I left Colorado, to the presser, comic book pressing. And um, he got the 11 books pressed them, he had a little bit of a wait, and then sent them over to CGC. I had fast-tracked the first nine books. Um, they had received it June 29th, and then completed it August 1st. And it took a few days for pickup and, and shipping, and it, it arrived to me uh, two days ago. So I'm just you know doing the unboxing now. So it was pretty quick turnaround time, if uh, you ask me. It was... I think they were saying it was around 20, 25 days for fast track um, for, I think this is economy. I don't know. But yeah, and um, it was pretty, pretty close, pretty close to about that marker. So, um, and then when the two modern books come back, I'll do that unboxing as well. But I was more excited for these books more so than anything else. Because um, these were all books I, I basically either uh, compiled when I was out in Colorado or, you know, one or two books I won in a contest. So, um, I got those. So, uh, all right, let me open this up. And, um, I'll show you the books. All right, so, uh, Got this opened up. I haven't done a CGC unboxing in quite some time. So, um, first and foremost, I just want to make sure when I'm looking at the books, there's no issues with the slabs, no issues with the labels, any of that nonsense. So, um, because now I think they have changed their policy. If you have seen any issues, you have to respond to them within, I think, 30 days um, so that they can get that fixed. So uh, that's why you kind of want to do this in a timely fashion. So we'll start with, all right, so I'm not too sure what books what that I'm pulling. Um, so what I'll do is I'll um, pull out the book. I'll talk a little bit about it. And um, I did write some notes on some of the books and like what the expected grade was going to be. And then we'll see whether or not, you know, it improved that or it went below the estimation. You know, there was a few of the books that were in really rough shape. So I wanted to just get them graded and just to preserve them just because there are some of them were like, I think two or three were brittle. So, um, I, you know, firm believer, it's preservation, you know, conservation of books. So um, let's show off the first book. Oh, and believe it or not, this is one of the brittle books. All right. So this was... Um, Punch Comics 13. All right. This was a really cool pickup. I ended up getting that at the um, One Day Comic Show. As you can see there, it's in rough shape. There is obviously some pieces missing there on the book. Um, you can see the back. I believe this book was detached, if I'm not mistaken. Let me just pull out my notes real quick. Um, what did I write? Uh, April 45, Chessler Comics, grade estimated 0.5, detached but appears complete. Um, Gus Ricca cover, 21 on the census, very scarce. All right. So uh, 0.5 is what I was expecting. <laughs> Hopefully it's a 0.5. It um, be really bad if I got a no grade, but I don't think that was the case. So what did we get? 0.5, boom. All right, so we're off to a good start. Um, what's it say? Paul Gattuso, art, 
I'm surprised they didn't mention that it was um, uh, that it was Gus Ricca cover because it, it does say well you can't really see on this example but uh, you can see what starts to say R.I. for Gus Ricca but um, anyways I'm like I said I'm happy this this book is not easy to find obviously Punch Comics um, 12 is that really you know expensive book in the series but this is a great, you know, pre-code horror graveyard cover. And you can see she's getting thrown into the, <laughs> going right into the, uh, what looks like the tombstone. And, um, you know, they got a nice little hole buried for her there with the big skeleton hand. And it actually says, those who have defied the skeleton, G. Tuska, Gus Ricker, O. Eppers, and Fran Smith, question mark. So it even tells you, like, those are the name of the writers and artists for this book. So I'm kind of surprised that CGC didn't notate that. But anyways, um, like I said, 0.5, brittle pages. Happy to have this book. This is a PC book. It's not going anywhere. Because I'll probably not be able to find one <laughs> ever again if I, if I get rid of that. All right, so next book. All right, uh, let's see. What do we got here? All right, next book we got is, oh, nice, Date with Danger, issue number six. Um, really cool cover, another one that's, uh, it was, I don't know what you consider this, uh, pre-code war, oh yeah, war cover, war cover. Um, this is issue number six. This was actually a two-issue uh, series by Standard Comics. And there's also an atom bomb story, and it does notate it on there. Um, last issue, I was really surprised to pick up this book there. Um, what did I pay? Twenty five bucks for it? Yeah, I paid twenty five bucks. It says it's um, February fifty three, published by monthly, but only two issues in the series. Uh, <laughs> um, let's see. Estimated grade I had was a VG four point oh. All right, cool. So this one, I do remember, had potential for a grade bump. Uh, I did see some pressable defects on the book. Actually looks pretty clean from the back. So let's see what we got. Oh, wow. 5.0. Nice. That is cool. As you can see there, there's um, a nice color breaking crease that goes right along the side. So you can't do anything with that, but um, the back looks really clean. You got a nice promo here for Daisy Air Rifles. Um, slab itself slightly off on the line, and you can see there at the top, just slightly off, but um, no big deal. What I'm more concerned about is making sure that the slab is fine, which it is. But uh, yeah, this was really cool. Um, and I like it because you can see it's kind of like right in that Cold War because you got this um, soldier here with the red star hat on there. So um, really, really digging that cover. But yeah really happy with that 5.0 we got a, a two grade bump on there so that was really cool all right what do we got next book all right so this is the um only silver age book i have on here this was also a book i picked up at the um at the one day show and uh this is amazing spider-man issue number 51 this was uh, second appearance of Kingpin, first cover appearance of Kingpin, really great cover done by John Romita. Um, I believe I had this at a 3.5, uh, let me look at it, oh no, sorry, I had it estimated grade at 4.5, alright, so um, let's see what we got, ooh, 3.5, ah, stinker, alright, um, Cream to off-white pages, and uh, it says second appearance of Kingpin. That's a bit of a bummer. Three point five. Oh well, what can you do about that? 
Um, this book will be up for sale. Let's see. All right. Next book. All right. So this book is... Oh, cool. All right. So this book is Out of the Night, issue number 11 from ACG. Love this book. Nice electrocution cover. Um, I almost wish they notated that. But um, let's see. What did I put down for this book? Um, waterlogged, heavy water stain, off white to white pages. Um, let's see. Let's see. Did I write down a grade? Has pressable defects. Oh, here we go. Good minus. All right. So what's that? 2.0? Um, yep. All right. So that's what I had. 2.0. All right. What do we got? 2.5. All right. I'll take that. And we got off white pages. So sweet. I'm happy with that. And, um, like I said, sometimes with these water stains, you can't do much about these things. Um, it is what it is. But uh, we did get a half a point up from my grade estimation, so that was nice. And in the back, we got um, knee extra spending money. Here's fifty dollars to use as you <laughs> to use as you please. So very cool. So that was like I said, out of the night issue number eleven. So we are about halfway there. And then we'll go to the other side. All right. So this was the other book that I was expecting to be low grade. All right. This is Eerie number six. This book, as you can see, <laughs> is in rough shape. Um... I, when I talked to Eric, I told him there really wasn't too much you could do with this book. Um, as you can see, it was missing a good chunk there. Um, it's a little faded here in the middle. And obviously on the side here, a little chunk missing. The book was detached um, front and I believe back cover. I'd have to check the notes, but I'm pretty sure it was completely detached. So it was one of those I wanted to just get preserved because this is a pretty, um, pretty scarce book. I think there was only 10, 9 or 10 graded on the census, um, if I'm not mistaken. So uh, obviously you see in this condition, I'm expecting it to be 0.5. Um, anything higher, I'd be really surprised. So it shouldn't be that, but 0.5, boom, 0.5. And we got off white pages. Look at that. We didn't get brittle pages on this one. Very cool. All right. And it says how to fix any part of any car. Free seven day trial. <laughs> Very cool. Um, and uh, who is this? Oh, this is from Avon. So any, a lot of these pre-code horror books from Avon are really difficult to find. And if you can find them, highly recommend trying to pick one up. I do like the, uh, even the trade dress. It's really cool how they did that with the trade dress. But a uh, great cover, obviously rough shape, but you do get that uh, damsel in distress there holding the uh, lantern as you see this big demon coming after her. Very cool. All right. Next book. So now we're on to the last four books right one two three yep last four books all right so this book um this book was actually a book i had won from jerry the jitterbug i believe it was his 1000 subscriber giveaway so um he's gotten me more into the uh, faucet comics i uh, just loved watching his videos with his um you know his techniques and conservation of the books especially the uh, Captain Marvel books cap um, just so many so many great examples of, uh, of conservation videos he's made and um, this was a really cool cover I like just the action that you saw on the front 
and um, I decided why not just get it graded just for the hell of it, you know? Um, and this would stay in the collection. So this was um, Captain Marvel Adventures, issue number 77. I did not write any notes on the book, um, so I didn't have an estimated grade on it. But as you can see, it came back at a 1.8. And um, I believe, is it detached? I don't read. Uh, it's tough to say. I'd have to look at the... Um, at the uh, graders notes but they did they did notate it on there that staples were removed um, so interesting I know they talked about it in their recent one of their recent emails that they were gonna re you know eliminate a lot of the small notations on the front and just keep like a few minimal ones so um, as you can see one of the new you know CGC labels that were updated and it says staples removed and um, the other thing I forgot to even mention that they have the um, the QR codes they didn't, they didn't even mention that we have already what six books in <laughs> so QR codes uh, we're at right here so uh, now you can just quickly scan them and um, and look it up and uh, you can also see that there is a little bit of a chew mark there so that's probably why you know Took a big hit on top of that but uh cool cover i like the action scene you can see he's uh uh captain marvel looks like he's hitting i don't know somebody there he's putting out a fire he's watering the grass and he's lounging <laughs> that's pretty cool so uh let's see what else to say on here auto bender story cc back cover so a lot of these captain marvel adventures were done by um cc back so really nice. All right, we got three to go. Oh, this was a cool cover. Um, this was a four color book. This was four color issue number 359. If you're not familiar with this book, first appearance of Frosty the Snowman in comics. Um, they don't notate that, it's a bit of a shame. It, but it does say it's uh, Frosty the Snowman based on the Columbia Records recording by Gene Autry. Um, this was actually a fun read. I, I did. They had like a three or four stories in there. Um, really fun read. I think I had this at a 4.0 or 4.5. But it had a bunch of pressable defects. So I was really waiting to see what this would show up as. So let me pull up my notes real quick. Um, uh, here we go. Yes. So VG plus, so 4.5 and, uh, notes looks like there's seven on the census. Is that right? I'll have to check on that. I thought there was slightly more than that, but either way, not many graded. Um, what do we get? 5.5. Nice. So right in the middle and we got, uh, two gray bumps from what I estimated. So that's really cool. And in the back, you got some Frosty the Snowman illustrations. So that's really nice. Be back next winter, Frosty. <laughs> so that's cool. 5.5. And it was uh, off white to white pages. All right. We're we down to the last two books. Um, this one was a war book. And uh, another book that I think I didn't have next to nothing into this book. I think I paid 15 bucks for this book. So um, this is True Comics issue number 36. I don't recall what the grade was. Um, probably four, four, five. But um, nice little action cover as well. You see uh, Canada Subbusters, Flying General. And this is from Parents Magazine. There you go. From what's this? June, June of 1944. So you get a war cover. What do we get? Four or five off white pages. And um, yeah, not bad at all. Can't complain with that one. You know, the press, the press helped a little bit. 
straightened out some of the creases in there. But yeah, four or five, not too bad at all. All right, and what we got? Last book. All right. So last book. It was one that I ended up picking up at um, the auction house in uh, in Rhode Island, Bruno and Company Auctioneers. Really cool book. Nice cover. This is obviously a Cold War cover. Uh, is this tomorrow? No number. This is by Cathetical Guide from 1947. They don't even put a month on it. <laughs> it was just whenever. Whenever in 1947. Um, it talks about the Ten Commandments of Citizenship to Fight Communism. <laughs> really cool. So obviously this is... Um, a promotional book to help uh, fight off communism. Historically, a pretty important book. Um, and they do come out with three different versions. As you can see here, there's a 10 cent version. There's a, you know, one that's just blanked out. And I want to say there's a different colored variation. So uh, this is the 10 cent variation. I think it's not the hardest, but I think it's the second hardest one to get. And um, I believe, did I write notes on this one as well? Um, oh, I, that, that's what, that's right. From the auction house, they had estimated at a 2.0. So, it uh, doesn't look like a 2.0. Looks, I don't know, a little better. Well, let's see what we got. 3.0, all right, that's awesome. Um, the back, see there's a little bit there in the corner. Um, front as well right there but otherwise it looks really nice it presents well for what it is you know, considering it's a 3.0 and uh, oh actually I tell you right there all right so there's four versions that exist um, 10 cent cover two versions so that's this is a 10 cent cover no price and no price you know, and then no price with blank circle. And then they notate it as a flag cover. Really cool. This book stays in the PC. This ain't going anywhere. Um, but yeah, hopefully you guys enjoyed that. If you did, hit the thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't already. And until next time, Marks with the Comics. Out.